this time is we got to check some things in the var mail folder. Now, if you don't know what the var mail folder is, it's essentially this folder var mail, um, which at my current machine is empty, but it usually contains like system notification and messages from other users on the same system. It's kind of a mail system within Linux, kind of cool. If you ask me the next thing, so we, we will dive into this when we cross it. It's not that big a part in this hacking challenge. What's the bigger deal is actually the CVE that we have over here, which is the CVE 2023 free. Now, um, we are going to use this CVE over here that you can see on this screen. We have the explanation of what this CVE does. Now, essentially it abuses a bug in the fuse or overlay FS and kind of does some crazy mounting. Um, but for that, we need to know what the overlay FS is. Now in this mounting process, uh, you can abuse a set UID bug as well. So as you can see here, hopefully where my finger is pointing, um, you, we will abuse an SUID setting with the overlay FS. Now, what does this all mean? All these links that I've posted here are in the description. So make sure to check it out. If you want to have more information, we're just going to do a quick rundown so we can go on with the hacking. Now, um, the SUID bit essentially tells Linux that this binary, it's usually binaries, has the permission of the owner and not of the person that's executing it. One example I'd like to show all the time is sudo, uh, because if, for example, I type in who am I in my machine, I'm just parallels, which is the user. But if I do sudo, who am I? Well, now I have to enter the password and you can see my keyboard. And so I hit the right numbers. Nope. Come on. All right. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of hard typing in the password without showing you what I'm typing. Now, so back to what I was saying, if I just type in who am I, I'm just my regular everyday user. But if I do sudo who am I, I am root. That's because we have this kind of SUID bit set that tells us, oh, you can actually execute sudo as root and you'll become root, etc., etc. There are a ton of other things that do that. Um, but as said, if you want more details, as always, there is more in the description down below. And now we have the SUID bit that we will be exploiting and we have the overlay FS. Now, a quick TLDR of the overlay FS is the overlay file system, often abbreviated as overlay FS, allows the user to merge several mount points into a unified file system. Now, uh, this is kind of an oversimplification, maybe. You can find detailed description in the link here. You can find it in the description down below as well. And I also posted a short video, like, uh, you know, the fake TikToks from Google or YouTube. Uh, in the description down below, if you don't want to spend seven hours reading this one and still not understanding what the hell it is. The shortest, I think about 20 seconds, and it will explain to you what overlay FS is and how to use it. All right, great. Now, last time I told you to watch the top 10 Linux commands. Today, we're going to learn some more and use the ones from the video that I told you to watch. Now. One command is uname minus a, which will give us some basic information about the version. Now, this is Kali Linux 22.2 and it's using this kernel. Now, the kernel number is what we're mostly interested in because the kernel number will tell us what the heck is actually possible with this machine, what vulnerabilities are available for this machine, etc., etc. Now, I've done a little preparation beforehand, so I know that we will have a kernel that is vulnerable to this exploit over here. And I also already found a link where we can find the exploit, which is, let me copy the link and let me paste it in here. A ready-made exploit yesterday, it still worked. Let's hope it works today, which we can then run and execute. It's made by, I guess, a Chinese person. So, you know, it's gonna be good. So we have the exploit from the Chinese hacker. And to get this exploit, we will use a command called git. The most basic one is git clone. This will copy this repository onto our local machine. We can actually just do that right now. Let's go in here, git clone this one, not the HTTP uh, website URL. All right, perfect. Now we have this CVE in here. 
and we will have to run it and build it and execute it. And for that, we have to move this entire directory up to our hacked server and then execute it. But let's get actually into our server. Now, for those of you that joined last time, you may know that we already found the password. So what does that mean for us? This one is a bit in the way. Can we move this? Go back in here. We don't need you anymore. You can chill out back there. Perfect. Now let's move this one over here because we're essentially done with this one. And uh, new to this whole AI stuff. Let's move you up here so you, you're not in the way of anything. Now we can take this window and make it a bit bigger so even the one watching on phone can actually enjoy what's happening over here. Crazy. Nice. Okay, that's the power of VR for you. Um, but uh, if you remember from last time, we had kind of a uh, success with finding credentials. Now, cat creds, if you remember, we found this username admin and the super duper pass123. And we just tried to use this password in hopes that the admin reuses the password. And they did. So we become we became the admin user. If we do a who am I, we get admin. We found the user flag here in user txt and that was that. But we also found some sad things. For example, we are not actually an administrator. We just called admin. We don't have any root permissions. We can even we can't even do sudo because the admin is not in the sudo or file. What does this actually mean for us? This means um, we have to enumerate this machine and possibly abuse an privilege escalation exploit. Now, as I said before, we have uname minus a to find out the kernel and we also have lsb release a to find out information about the Ubuntu. Now, if we go into this, we can basically copy the kernel version, boom, paste it in here. Ubuntu, what was the Ubuntu version? The Ubuntu 24, blah, 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 LTS and Prevesc exploit. Now, if we enter this one, we should find a couple of exploits that we could try. Even Reddit has some exploit already for, not, for us, but we also have this overlay FS vulnerability down here, which we talked about before over there, if you may remember. Now, this is the link, the exact same link I found before. So we're not going to do all of this. It also um, is in the description down below for you. So you can check this out um, in a calm moment. All we need to know is that we have found a CVE vulnerability that may affect our machine. It doesn't say any information check if your system is vulnerable. The easiest way to check whether your system is vulnerable is to see which, which version of the Linux kernel it uses by running the command uname minus R. A system is likely to be vulnerable if it has a kernel version lower than six. Perfect. We are at 5.15, which um, according to my genius mathematical calculation is lower than 6.2. Perfect. That means that we have to upload our, how do you say this? Our exploit. Now we have git installed in here. So maybe we could try to just git clone it onto the machine, but I doubt that it is connected to the internet. It's not looking great. Okay. That doesn't look like it's something that's gonna work out for us. So what we will do instead is we will go into our HTTP two million folder where we have our CVE, zip it into our CVE and we want the CVE folder. Now we've zipped it and then we're gonna run a command SCP, which uh, we will tell to upload hello, the CVE.zip onto the machine as admin at 2 million dot HTTP in our home. Oh, we need the password. Of course, we have it over here. Copy paste. Boom. Now, if we go over to our session that we have over here, why is the camera pointing over here? I don't know. Now, if, uh, if we're honest and what we're doing is not really the best way to go about things because we should actually be reading what all of this does. And we should also check out the article. I did this beforehand, or at least the article. I didn't read the code that much. I just trust this random Chinese hacker guy. But uh, we're just gonna run a couple of commands to build this exploit. 
The first one is make all. Good. That's worked fine. Now the next one I've written it down is fuse dot oval cap lower. Mount on set the right command. Make all. Let's just copy this command from over here. Why type it in when we can just copy paste it? Boom. Yeah, we have to break this and put it in the background so we can execute the exploit, which is the .exp file. Now with this end on percent here, we set this as a background job. And now our shell is basically free to do whatever we want. Let's run exp. And after a quick five seconds or so, you can see over here that we are root. Now let's take a look if this actually works. Who am I? I'm root. Perfect. That's fantastic. I'm root. So what do we do? We go into our home. Where are we? PWD. We have home admin. Weird, but okay. Since I'm the root, why I am, why am I in the admin folder? Now, anyways, we can, we know, or we should know that the root home is in slash root. And in here we have the root.txt with the flag. As always, if you don't want to know the flag, now's the time to look away and here we can submit. Now, there's also something special on this machine because if we take a look inside, we have also thank you the JSON. Okay, data is URL encoded. So let's uh, just grab this and we see here a data and an encoding, which is URL. Now, luckily, I know for a fact that we have to do a couple of encodings in here. So let's just use burp suite because we can encode in whatever we want in here. Also, who doesn't want to see burp suite in space? Did I mention that we're in space? Let's start up burp and what happened? And now let's go to the decoder and let's paste this in here and decode as URL. And now we have another chunk of data and we just copy this entire thing. Did it copy everything? Yes. And that is X. So let's do decode as X. Okay. That didn't work out like I wanted. You know what? I'm stupid. ASCII hex. And now we want to do some XOR encryption with the key. What is the key? Hack the box. Okay. We have base 64. So let's decode. So let's just open up Cyber Chef. That's a great tool which we can use for encryption, decryption, and other things. So UTF and enable this one. And now we have it. Okay. We were almost there. We just needed to change this UTF 8 scheme. So what do we get? Dear Hack the Box community, we're thrilled to announce a momentous milestone in our journey together. With immense joy and gratitude, we celebrate the achievement of reaching 2 million remarkable users. This incredible feat would not have been possible without each and every one of you. From the very beginning, blah blah blah. I mean, not blah blah blah, it's kind of nice. They're talking about knowledge sharing, collaboration and hands-on experience are fundamental to to per personal and professional growth together and that they used this environment that they built to. Now another cool feature they have is um, actually a feature that will make me obsolete. They have a guided mode which they will guide you through each and every step. Oh, I forgot to show you something. Now, um, if the enumeration we did before wasn't enough, you could also look into war mail admin and there someone tells me about a CVE that's using overlay FS views. And now that's uh, maybe that was a bit of a big jump. But as I was preparing this, I forgot to show this. So now that we've solved this challenge, next time we will need to do another challenge. Now, luckily for you, there's a poll in the community tab on my channel where you can and uh, where you can pick of one of two different machines that we could solve. Or you can even suggest your own ideas. Just make sure that it is a retired machine and if possible, a free one as well.